Hi, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we have a pair of chuck -a boots from Crockett and Jones that we are going to resell for a customer who brought them in. She brought them in to have them resold for her husband. And um, one of the things that we noticed that they had been resold before, and the resell was pretty much a botched job. It was a 360 welt, and the stitching was just all over the place, not even on the welt. Some of it was sanded off on the sides, and it wasn't just in a few places. It was like pretty much both shoes halfway around the shoe and so um, I, I was kind of surprised that a, another cobbler would actually do that hand it back and then take money for it and so this kind of brings on another subject that at this on this channel we, we really want to promote the idea of buying shoes that are made to be recrafted higher quality and you can then develop a relationship with a cobbler whether it's your local cobbler or you know a mail off service we really want you to focus on getting a shoe that can be handed over to not only just a cobbler but also a cobbler who is qualified so while there are a lot of good mom and pop cobblers out there you have to also do your research and ask around who other people recommend and sometimes you know it's kind of a gamble uh, but you do want to you know develop a relationship with somebody that you trust with your shoes that are made to be resold because a lot of these are going to be higher end higher quality made shoes so on that note let's try to save these crockett and jones all right so here's a little closer look at what's going on uh, you probably weren't able to see this much on the turntable but here is the welt and you see the stitches are literally in the block they're not even on the welt all the way around the other boot is actually even worse than this it's kind of all the way around and you can see it's got a storm welt a midsole and the outsole here so let me explain real quick why this happened the welt only has so much of a lip for the machine to stitch new stitches on and when it's coming out of the factory they've stitched it they've sanded it and then the the, the next cobbler you know he's uh sands it before he stitches it and he sanded a little too much off the toe around the heel and a lot of times this is where it can get kind of short and there wasn't much of a lip left to do it also if they don't pull out the previous stitches then it also takes up some of that room for where you can't the stitch can't uh, create a clean hole through there so that's another good reason why you want your cobbler to remove those old stitches now what the cobbler should have done is either replace the welt or now i don't recommend this unless it's like a last case emergency and always talk to the customer if they don't want to replace the welt then you could always turn it into a black stitch shoe and stitch it from the inside but i don't recommend that just because uh it, it's just replace the welt that's usually the best way but that's kind of a last ditch emergency uh, option so let's get started Got used a lot of glue in this. See, this wasn't even stitched. For those asking about shanks, wood shank. And sometimes people wonder 
they see little things of plastic. Like what's all this plastic in here? During the making process, uh, they will put it in the shrink wrap, the whole uh, boot or shoe, while it's got the last in it, they put it in the shrink wrap plastic to, just to protect it from getting dirty. And then they stitch the welt on, and then after they're done, they get a fine knife and cut that plastic off. So that's just the remainder of that. Uh, here's the cork. The cork was just glued to the Dickens, to this midsole. So when it came off, all the cork went with it. Hey, it makes it easier for me actually, cause I gotta replace it and I don't have to dig it out. All right, so let's take this welt off. So the, now that the welt's off, all these stitches are just the in, inner part of the stitching that uh, held on. So we'll just pull all these out and it'll expose our holes for, we'll reuse those holes to put the new welt on. All right, so we've got the welts off, all the strings are pulled out, um, cavity. We're gonna put a little bit of glue up underneath this uh, shank just to make sure that it's uh, it's down tight. And we've already got the new storm welts dyed and we're gonna start stitching that on. It's kind of a long process, so you probably won't see all of it, but you'll see enough of it and you'll get the gist of it. Come on. All right, so we've got our new welt on, got all the cork out, um, removed the shank, put some new glue in here, and we're gonna put this on and then re-cork it, and then we will uh, go from there. Now, a lot of people ask about cork. You can uh, actually use sheet cork 
like this. Um, a lot of the spoke shoemakers still use sheet cork. A lot of the stuff you're used to seeing in there, that's just mass produced shoes. Um, it comes out in a big hopper and then they hot iron it flat, but um, it's the same it is genuine cork. All right, so we have put the new cork into the, uh, the cavity in the bed sanded it um, um, smooth and put our first coat of glue on. We're gonna put a midsole on top of this and then after that we're gonna put some um, Baker sole leather. This is out of Devonshire, England. It is the last oak bark pit tan tannery in Britain and most of the shoes coming out of Northampton, England are using uh, some Baker. So this is some very, very good, good leather. And uh, so if any of you guys have English made shoes when I'm resold, this is a good choice for you. Let's go. So this is the midsole, and we've already roughed up both sides just so the glue can get down in there. And uh, after this, we'll put our outsole on. All right, so this is the midsole, and um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It goes midway between the welt the, and the outsole. And it's just another layer. Um, some shoes, a lot of most shoes don't have a midsole. It's strictly the sole is on top of the welt and the cork and off she goes. Um, but some have an extra layer in and some actually have a, a thinner uh, oak bark and it's actually a double stack. So it comes in different thicknesses, but uh, this is the same thickness as the original. So we'll put some glue on this and then we'll put our Baker leather on top of this. All right, so we're gonna channel this, and unlike some Crockett and Jones, um, this one actually comes with a open channel instead of a closed channel. 
and so you can actually see the exposed stitches. Now, from my understanding, and for any of you guys out there uh, or ladies that know the answer to this, make sure you leave it in the comments. I think it's their hand uh, grade or um, their the, the hand grade is has a closed channel. The bench grade does not have all the bells and whistles like that. So. Um, I've got a pair of Crockett and Jones that were actually a contract, but they were a bench grade contract and they had a closed channel, but that may be because they were a contract. So if you know the answer to that or can confirm that, then let us know. Better. So when it goes through the machine, sometimes the little metal that just kind of pushes up, creates a little lip. So we're just gonna knock it back down and get a little flush edge. Then we can go over it with our burnishing stick. All right, so for those who haven't seen some of our other videos, we use this oak dowel and just kind of slick the leather. Kind of something smooths out some of the imperfections. It kind of turns into a, feels like glass afterwards. I like to do it when there's a little bit of moisture left in the sole as we wet it during the stitching process. Turn it around here. So this is just an alcohol burner and anytime you're doing fudge wheels or bunking wheels or any type of decorative, uh, even your irons, your hill irons and your uh, edge irons, it's just best to heat them up and uh, it looks cleaner. So we are actually replacing his hill blocks. Uh, the originals were fine, they were stacked leather, but um, they were just a little, because I put on a new welt uh, and haven't sanded down, the, the original hill block was just a tiny bit thinner, just a matter of millimeters, and I didn't want to sand it down that much, so I just put on a fresh one, and it'll, it'll fit it just fine. All right, 
right, so we have got our block zone, got our new top lift zone. We press those and we're gonna trim this excess and uh, sand them down and put some tacks in, do some coloring, and then we'll get to the uppers. All right, so I'm gonna start working on the uppers of these Crockett and Jones. Uh, they were in pretty rough shape. Uh, I could have just used a saddle soap and tried to clean them up some and uh, put some cream on there. And that, that would have done a, a really good job and gotten these back to looking much better. I don't think he'd done a lot of conditioning on these leather shoes uh, because I've already taken acetone and you know, wiped over these shoes just to try to pull off a lot of the dirt and the excess cream and, and pigment and whatnot, and hardly anything came off of my rag. So that, that shows just how worn out these leather uppers were. Uh, but what we're gonna do, like I said, I've already put acetone on them. Uh, I've already sanded down some of the spots that were really rough up here on the toes, just a really high grit sandpaper. Um, I know you probably wanted to see me do that, but there's really not much to it. Um, like I said, it's just very light sandpaper. I'm just lightly sanding it and it, it smooths a lot of that down. So now what I'm gonna do is put a lot of the colors back or color back into this upper and then condition the shoes really well, put another shoe cream on them and just uh, go from there and make these look much better. So let's get to it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just put the dot leather dye on here. Uh, we use Phoebing's dye. We've got it in these little bottles here, but that's because we also use a spray gun a lot of times and we'll go back and do some of that. Uh, but that's, we're using the tan color. All right, so these boots have the dye on them, uh, or should I say the dye is dried. Now what we're gonna do is just put some conditioner on there, some shoe creams, uh, maybe a little wax, um, a coat or two of wax around the, sh the boot as well as on the toes, and uh, just make these look a little better on the uppers, and that should be about it. As you can see as I'm doing this, that it kind of darkens the leather in some spots, but um, that's no biggie because all that's doing is just sucking in all that moisture from the conditioner 
and once it has absorbed all of that, um, absorbed all of it, then it'll dry and go back to its normal color. So if you ever see your shoe do that, don't panic. Uh, again, it usually only does that when your shoes or your boots are really dry and uh, they haven't been conditioned in a while. So here's what they're looking like after dyeing them and just putting on some Renovateur. You can see the color and just the moisture is back in that boot. Uh, I think what I'm gonna go with is the cognac color in the Medal d'Or cream or the Pomadeer cream and uh, put a little bit more color into it. So let's see how this looks. Again, we get a lot of questions asking, um, you know, if you should use a dauber like this one or whether you should use a rag or whatnot. Uh, as you've seen, if, if you watched any of our other videos, we really mix it up. Sometimes I'll use a dauber, sometimes I'll just use an old rag. Um, it, it's, really, it's really up to you, so whatever floats your boat. So we've gotten the cream onto the shoes, we buffed them off. Now what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of the dark brown wax to the toes and maybe the heel area and just bring out a little bit of a patina look on the toes and the back. And that should just about wrap these boots up and then we'll show you the final product. So that wraps up this resole of this pair of Crockett and Jones chugger boots. Again, this is just the um, the reason why you want to buy a high quality, well made shoe because even though there are things that um, were completely blown out, especially the welt after the last resole, it can be re it can be taken off and 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 have a new welt put back on a new you know a new midsole, new cork, new heel blocks. I mean, a well made shoe can be deconstructed and then put back together. So um, a little rundown of what we did to this one. Um, we did put a new storm weld on, replaced the midsole with an actual veg tan. Uh, actually, the other one was veg tan, as well as the hill blocks were, uh, were stacked veg tan as well. But like I said, they were just a little bit um, narrower than the new weld that we had to sand down and kind of, it was a few millimeters off. So we, uh, we went ahead and just replaced those with some new ones. Uh, we put the British tanned uh, Baker Oak Bark pit tan uh, soles on those. So again, if you do have British made shoes, this might be something that you want to uh, look at for your shoes when they get resold. And then we put some uh, um, about eight millimeter um, combination heels on there and then just finished it off with some, some brass tacking. This one did have the open channel, so we left it the way the original was, and then the uppers were in just, gosh, horrible shape. And a lot of that was actually just due to the guy wearing it um, very hard for his work. And uh, so we went ahead and just stripped that down and put some new, kind of blended some colors on it just to try to get it back to the original color or as close to it as we can. But that's it. 
there's the end result, the before and the after. Hope you like this. If you do like it, make sure you subscribe to the to our channel and hit the like button. Uh, also, make sure you're hitting that bell because we're having new videos come out all the time, and then you'll get those popping straight up onto your feed saying that there's a new one out. So until next time, y'all have a good one. Mm -hmm.